Hi everybody, this is Jim with Song Tripping. Happy to be back reviewing some more CDs and albums with you. Welcome to the vinyl community and the CD community. Today I'm going to be talking about this behemoth, the Bruno Walter New York Philharmonic Complete Columbia Album Collection, 77 CDs strong. Uh, let's get right into it. Um, if you don't know much about Bruno Walter, his career spanned two centuries. His life overlaps with Brahms and Bruckner. He was alive at the same time in his youth. He was a friend and follower of Gustav Mahler. He was born into a world that preceded the recording age, and he lived into the stereo age, the golden age of stereo. We're talking about Bruno Walter, one of the world's greatest conductors. Last year, I found a good deal on this. 77 CD box set issued by Sony Classical. It's taken me about a year to get through them all, but man, was it worth it. A little bit of backstory here. When I was a kid first exploring the world of classical music, there's one Bruno Valter record struck a nerve. It was my first Bruno Valter record. It was this recording of Brahms' first symphony. And came out in the early mid-50s. This, I think, was a reissue. And you can see classic Columbia 6i mono record. Great, great record. Something came across in this music that made me pay attention. Of course, that had a lot to do with Brahms. Great composer. I think this was probably my first Brahms record. It's a wonderful symphony. But I also think it has a lot to do with Bruno Walter. Any great conductor, they take the notes on the page and they mold them into a coherent narrative. They punctuate it, they lift it where it needs to ascend, they quiet it down when something more tender is called for, they work with harmonics, sonorities, they, they mold a symphony orchestra uh, or a chamber orchestra and get them singing in tune with one another, so to speak. And something about this Bruno Walter record, it really broke some some barriers for me. Um, some biases I had against classical music. Uh, and you can hear it in this symphony from start to finish, from the turbulent, tense opening notes of that first movement all the way to the Horn fanfare, horn fanfare that um, greets us in the last movement. Uh, so strong, and every point in between. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely rendering, and uh, I never forgot that first exposure to Brahms. Thanks to Bruno Walter, uh, I was. I remember listening, lying back on my bed in my suburban bedroom, being transported by that music to a better place. And it's funny because later in life I, I got rid of this album when I was downsizing. It was never in very good condition. I, I think I got it for a buck at Plastic Fantastic in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. So it, it was pretty beat up. And uh, But many years later my wife repurchased it um, as a birthday gift and it was like reuniting with an old friend. And that album really opened some doors of perception. There were a couple other albums like that. When This is going to get back in my college years when I started trying out classical music. Uh, one would be this one, uh, Stravinsky, The Firebird Suite, and Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Juliet with Leonard Bernstein and the New York Philharmonic. Really, really good. And then Ravel's Greatest Hits. Uh, with Leonard Bernstein in the New York Philharmonic and Eugene Ormany in the Philadelphia Orchestra. Also very impressionable. So there were a few, but the Brahms was pretty special for me because I think, even though I'm no expert in music theory by any stretch, and I'm not an expert in classical music, uh, I think something clicked when I was listening to that symphony. It I just realized what symphonic structure was capable of, and it, it sort of made sense to me. Even though I couldn't explain it to you, it, it made sense. And I realized that classical music could be very, very rewarding. So some backstory on Bruno Walter. 
Uh, he was born in Berlin, Germany, and because he was a Jew, he fled Germany and settled in America in 1939 to escape the Nazis. And unlike other German conductors of his age, uh, he is not uh, maligned by any association with Nazi Germany. Um, no compromises, no taint. Uh, he, his main claim to fame, I guess, was being the conductor of the New York Philharmonic for many, many years. When he retired, he handed the baton to Leonard Bernstein. Uh, and his, his wheelhouse is German music, especially German romantic music, from classical to romantic, and then into the 20th century. So on this box set, you are going to get a ton of Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, Brahms, Bruckner, Wagner, and Mahler, and others, uh, and some classic renderings of these works. Uh, in his late career, he, he sort of recorded some very famous stereo records with the Columbia Symphony Orchestra, which was sort of a hybrid uh, set of musicians. Some pulled from New York Philharmonic, some from the Los Angeles Symphony, some I think maybe Hollywood session musicians. And uh, they, those are very famous records. So when I saw this box set available at a pretty good price on Amazon, I think I got a 0%, you know, pay it out over a couple of months type of deal. Uh, I talked myself into buying it, and I don't regret it. The recordings span the years 1941 to 1961. Uh, he died in 1962, and it represents a golden age of recording. I, I love the sound of these records. The early CDs are in mono. And as you make your way through the set in order, the quality improves. Um, the, both the monos and the stereo CDs are 24-bit, 192 kilohertz remastered from the original tapes and discs. And uh, when you, the stereo the discs, there's 31 of those. Uh, and so a, a, the bulk of the box set is in mono, those early recordings, and then the 31 CDs of stereo music. And then you also get extras. You get um, interviews and uh, rehearsals and tributes. And uh, you also get this nice coffee table book, which has essays and liner notes. And uh, album art is represented, photographs. Let me get you to the... Here's sort of represented on the page. And then in the back, they have an uh, extensive index so that you can look up works by composer and what CD they are on. Keep in mind, um, the uh, they, they reproduce these on um, mini LP sleeves. I just love these. And they, they represent the front and back of the jacket. And then they, they not only do that, but then they, if you look at the CD of cells, they reproduce the labels as they were back in the day. And even the, the sort of kind of ridged vinyl. So it's, it's a nice presentation all the way. Um, these are some of the later stereo ones. Let's see if I can find one for you. Like this is a Bruckner. And but because there's more room on a CD than on an LP, sometimes they will add some uh, tracks uh, to the uh, that maybe appeared on another LP release, um, and even though it wouldn't be represented on the the actual jacket, right? So anyway, that's why you need the book. The book's really helpful that way to kind of sort through what's actually on the CDs. Um, what are my impressions of the performances? Again, I'm no expert, but I feel like I got my money's worth. It took me about a year to get through these, and I it's like getting a, a musical education in the classical repertoire, with the emphasis on German music. You get uh, tons of Mozart, you get two full cycles of Beethoven symphonies, one in mono, one in stereo, 
Um, it might even be like three cycles. Um, same for Brahms, two cycles of his four symphonies, one in mono, one in stereo. As I said, lots of Mozart. You get amazing renditions of several Mahler symphonies. It's a shame that he didn't uh, record all of them uh, because I think he's such a great representative, especially because he knew the guy, worked alongside him. Uh, and we have Bruno Walter to thank for, I think, popularizing Mahler uh, in America. He and Leonard Bernstein had a hand in that. Um, some of his Bruckner has helped me to kind of appreciate Bruckner in a new way. Uh, the Schumann, Schubert, uh, it's, it's all good. There's a great uh, Dvorak New World Symphony in there. And uh, it's just some classic, classic recordings. On the early mono stuff, you are going to get some, um, you'll hear like tapes, hiss, and, you know, the, some of the limitations of the early recordings in the 40s. There's like typical sort of early album cover. Um, but the, the quality improves, and once you get to the stereo records, um, they sound very, very, very good. Uh, no complaints about the mastering. Uh, you get the extra disc. It's kind of cool, especially to hear the ones where he's rehearsing the orchestra. You can you, you can you know, get a feel for his conducting style. And uh, he sounded like a really, really smart, gentle, cool, authoritative guy. Um, the interviews are fun. I probably won't listen t as often to the extras discs. Uh, I'll just focus on the music the next time I go through here. Uh, one of the interview discs is entirely in German. I didn't, since I don't speak German, I didn't feel the need to listen to the whole thing. But it's it's just a great set all around, and um, I, I highly recommend it if you've got a hankering for classical. Now this is also... Um, you see a lot of these boxes available. It's I think it's sort of a a heyday of um, relatively budget priced CD box sets. I mean, if you add up these seventy seven CDs for what I paid for it, um, you know, a dollar or two per CD it works out to, and you're just kind of getting it all here. It's 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 wonderful. And this there's if you look on a place like Amazon or your favorite. CD retailer, you're going to see these um, for other conductors. Sometimes the box sets are organized around composer. So it's it's worth uh, hunting these down if you are a CD collector and you're looking to kind of commemorate somebody that's important to you. So I'm glad I got the Bruno Walter box set. Um, if you have recommendations for box sets, let me know. Uh, put them in the comments. And um, I hope you subscribe to the channel and you enjoy the kind of content I'm providing here. And if so, um, subscribe, click the notifications bell, and um, leave a comment too. That always helps. So I hope to be back soon with a new video. But I hope you will check out Bruno Walter. The guy is really the real deal. Thanks for watching.